I hear this question all the time. How does homosexual marriage impact your marriage? Well, this platitude has a small grain of truth to it, but it only works if you ignore the rest of reality. It's not that recognizing other marriages changes your own, but how allowance morphs into coercion and then grows into extortion. For almost a dozen years, there has been a feud between the state of New York's Office of Children and Family Services, OCFS, and New Hope Family Services. We'll just call them New Hope for short. Now, New Hope was granted a perpetual corporate authorization as an adoption agency by OCFS. However, between January 2011 and November 2013, OCFS created policies and rules that would require that New Hope place children with couples that would violate their religious beliefs. The suit New Hope filed in December of 2018 has been through its ups and downs. With the latest court orders, though, it appears New Hope is currently enjoying the protections of their religious liberty. Will it be challenged again? We'll discuss that next on The Constitution Study. Hello there, Everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with The Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution. We teach the rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me. As always, you can find out more at the website, constitutionstudy.com, and I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that at the end of the program, including some sales that are going on through the end of 2022. But for now, I want to get to this lawsuit with OCFS and New Hope. Until 2010, New York law only allowed adoption by a married heterosexual couple. In January 2011, OCFS sent adoption agencies a letter to bring their policies in line with New York's domestic relations law. This was followed up in July with another letter stating that, quote, discrimination based on sexual orientation in the adoption study assessment process, quote, close quote, was prohibited. Now, in November 2013, OCFS promulgated a rule which prohibited, quote, discrimination and harassment against applicants for adoption services on the basis of race, creed, color, national origin, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, marital status, religion, or disability, close quote. Now, this rule would require that New Hope place adoptive children with couples other than traditional heterosexual married couples. This violated their religious beliefs. When an unmarried or same-sex couple contacted New Hope seeking to adopt a child, the couple were informed that New Hope could not provide them with the adoption services but it did offer to provide them referrals to other agencies. In 2018, OCFS conducted a comprehensive review of New Hope, and an OCFS employee advised them that its referral policy was in violation of OCFS policies. Now, New Hope declined to change its referral policy. OCFS informed New Hope that if it failed to bring its policies into compliance with regulations, they would lose their approval for their adoption program. New Hope filed suit. In reading the order of U.S. District Judge May D'Agostino, it appears New Hope based their suit on a violation of the First Amendment. At the heart of the First Amendment is the principle that each person should decide for himself or herself the ideas and beliefs deserving of expression, consideration, and adherence. Consistent with this principle, freedom of speech means that the government may not prohibit the expression of an idea, even one that society finds offensive or disagreeable. For much the same reason, the government also cannot tell people that there are things they must say. I've talked until I'm blue in the face about how actors under state law cannot violate the First Amendment. After all, the first five words points out that it applies to U.S. law. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievance. This was a violation of freedom of speech, which is protected in New York by Article 1, Section 8 of the New York State Constitution, which reads, Every citizen may freely speak, write, and publish his or her sentiments on all subjects, being responsible for the abuse of that right, and no law shall be passed to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or of the press. OCFS claims that the placing of children with adoptive families is government speech, not private, and therefore does not trigger First Amendment protections. 
is a state regulation requiring adoption agencies place children with couples in violation of the beliefs of those adoption agencies a violation of free speech? Well, from the judge's order. Thus, when the government directly regulates speech by mandating that persons explicitly agree with government policy on a particular matter, it plainly violates the First Amendment. This opinion has already been confirmed by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which said, when it examined the government speech issue earlier in this litigation, the Second Circuit concluded that nothing in the pleading suggested that there was expressive conduct or other speech engaged in by New Hope in the course of providing adoption services that constituted government speech. OCFS now claims it has evidence sufficient to change the opinion of the Second Circuit, but the judge does not agree. Accordingly, the court holds that none of New Hope's expressive conduct or other speech constitutes government speech. However, OCFS does bring up an interesting point. OCF also continues to argue that Section 421.3D does not compel or prohibit any speech. Let's set aside the position of OCFS that regulations regarding the placement of adoption of children is government speech. What about the question of compelling agreement with government policy? Is regulation of placement of children a form of speech? Looking at the definition of speech at the time of the ratification of the First Amendment, we find it means the faculty of uttering articulate sounds or words, as in human beings, the facility of expressing thoughts by words or articulate sounds. Speech was given to man by his creator for the most noblest purposes. Language. Words as expressing ideas. The acts of God to human ears cannot without process of speech be told. After some thought, I can see an argument for compelled speech. After all, those who work for and by definition represent New Hope are expressing thoughts by their words. By working with same-sex and unmarried adoptive couples, they must express ideas that are contrary to their beliefs. If we are to follow Occam's razor, there is a much simpler answer. New York's Constitution, Article 1, Section 3 states, the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall forever be allowed in the state to all humankind. Those who own, run, and are employed by New Hope have a religious profession that a married heterosexual couple is the only proper home for adopting a child. According to the New York Constitution, they cannot be discriminated against because of that religious profession. I've certainly heard it often enough. Why should religious people be allowed to discriminate against same-sex marriage? Seems those who ask that question never seem to consider the other side. Why should same-sex couples be allowed to discriminate against those who disagree with them? It's not like New Hope refused to interact with a couple with whom they could not, with a clear conscience, place a child. They expressed their position and offered the couple other agencies who would be able to place a child with them. If New Hope were the only adoption agency in the state, I might consider this discrimination against a same-sex couple. But that's not the case here. There are plenty of adoption agencies that will place children with same-sex or unmarried couples. Why should those couples force New Hope to be one of them? It appears that while prejudice and discrimination are two-sided, most people only consider their point of view. Which leaves us, for now at least, the Judge D'Agostino's order. After careful review of the record, the party's arguments, and the applicable law, in particular the Second Circuit's prior decision in this matter, the court hereby orders that OCFS's motion for summary judgment is denied, and the court further orders that New Hope's motion for summary judgment is granted, and the court further orders that OCFS is enjoined from enforcing 18 NYCRR Section 421.3D insofar as it would compel New Hope to process applications from or place children for adoption with same-sex couples or unmarried cohabiting couples, and insofar as would prevent New Hope from referring such couples to other agencies. The court finds for New Hope, and OCFS is enjoined from enforcing the regulation requiring New Hope to place children with same-sex or unmarried couples. I guess I've gotten used to seeing courts come to the right decision in their own way, even if it seems twisted and convoluted. The question for me is, Will this newfound respect for the rights of individuals and organizations to determine who they will do business with permeate throughout the federal judicial system? After all, the facts of this case are little different than the Masterpiece Kate Shop or Arlene's Flowers cases, or even the upcoming case 303 Creative recently heard by the Supreme Court. 
They all involve the state compelling people to act contrary to their conscience and religious beliefs. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if the protection of rights on both sides of the same-sex divide will be a priority. So after a long-fought battle, right now, New Hope, they have their rights protected. Will it stay that way? Will this get appealed to the circuit court, maybe even eventually the Supreme Court? We don't know yet. Do I agree with how the judge got to this answer? Not entirely. But I do agree that compelling a private company to express a certain position in order to act as an agency for the state or an actor for the state is compelled speech, a violation of free speech, in this case, a violation of the New York State Constitution. It's also, by the way, a violation of freedom of religion, even though that doesn't seem to be the core of the case here. Now, as I said, there are many other cases with similar facts that are coming up before the courts, and I'll track those as well. If you want to be kept informed, go to the website, constitutionstudy.com, and sign up for one of my mailing lists. There's the monthly newsletter. There's the, the, the videos and articles list, where I'll send you every video and article I put on the website. There's even the insider list for those who want more of a backstage view of what's going on here at the Constitution Study. I've got a lot going on right now. And in fact, from now until New Year's Day, there's a sale going on at the Constitution Study website. Just click the Books and More button. I'm giving you 20% off all of my books and my Made in Tennessee t-shirts. There aren't a lot right now, but check it out. 20% off, no codes, no nothing. Just uh, purchase them if you wouldn't mind. Maybe it'll help you get in the black this year. Maybe you just want to donate to the cause so I can do more of these, or, or you have a question. All of that can be done right there at the website. I look forward to hearing from you. I love hearing your stories. I love hearing your comments. I love your questions, and I love hearing maybe ideas you'd have for this program. So please, be in touch. I want to be engaged, especially as we go into 2023. I'm looking at ways to be more engaged with people, to see more people, to hear more people, to help educate more people, or just spend some time talking about the Constitution. Hopefully you find this interesting. Hopefully you find it engaging. Hopefully you'll come back next time and bring some friends when we're here at the Constitution Study.